Hello everybody. This is another informal update on KSC 8462852 for May 24th, 2017. This is intended to give links to relevant information for people that wish to follow the story. The recent dimming event has concluded, and from what I understand, the data is being processed and worked on, but there is not yet much information out there from Dr. Boyajan and her colleagues. It takes time to study data, and my sense is that they collected a lot of it. But what has happened are two new papers have come out that offer new explanations for at least one of the odd phenomena happening at this star. One thing to remember is that there appears to be two strange things going on with Boyajian's star. The short-term deep dips like the one that just happened and those in the capital light curve, and the long-term dimming trend that Bradley Schaefer identified. And no one's really sure how the two relate. It would seem pretty unlikely, though, that the two aren't related in some way. Uh, both are dimming events related to the same star, after all. But the first paper suggests that they do indeed have separate causes. This paper by Fernando Ballesteros and colleagues, link in the description below, explores the possibility of a ringed planet representing the day 792 dip, and the rest of the dips being made up of groups of Trojan asteroids. These objects would be relatively distant from the star, about 6 AU, and would occupy the same or close orbit with each other. That would make them relatively cold, explaining the lack of infrared initially seen with this star. But I think the main sticking point with this theory will be the sheer amount of asteroid material you'd need to block that much light. I've heard different takes on that, so not being an astronomer I don't know how much material you'd need. But like the cold comet theory from the original Boyajian paper, link in the description below, it could turn out to be implausibly high though I'm not sure that's settled. This whole story is still in flux. But the paper does make some predictions, and predictions are good because if they turn out to actually happen, then you've got something to go on. They predict that the star will be eclipsed again by a swarm of Trojan asteroids in early 2021, and the ring planet will be seen again in the first part of 2023. We shall see. The second paper is by J.I. Katz, link in the description below, and suggests that the material blocking the star is within our own solar system, essentially a, a ringed object in a distant orbit of the sun blocking the light from the star. There's been a few suggestions about this sort of material in the past, linked to a blog post by Jason Wright on this very thing in the description below. But with seeming periodicity gaining traction with the star, I think the solar system origins ideas for the material are losing traction. Only time and more information will tell. Lastly, uh, Dr. Wright has posted his take on these two papers in his blog. Link to that post in the description below. His blog is always a good read, but in the end I'm not sure these papers get us any closer to a full understanding of what's going on with a star, especially in regards to the long-term dimming trend the existence of which seems bolstered now, and how that relates to the short-term dips. So anyway, that's where it's at today, and I am science fiction author and futurist John Michael Godier, currently reading the comments section from one of my videos. Someone asked what I've done with the robotic text-to-speech me. He's on the charger, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer, and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.